Hello, hello, hello. Hi guys. Good morning. Welcome back to Hindu. Ki hai chal. I hope you are good. In this, we are going to see a problem. Minimum three colors to get k consecutive black box blocks. So, as you can see, that we have given a string blocks, which is of length n. String blocks, length n, and each block can be a white or a black, which represents the color of that specific ith block, white or black. Now, these characters. W or B, it denotes the color. Now you are given an integer k. As we can see, we are also given an integer k, which is the desired number of consecutive black blocks. So I want k consecutive black blocks. So if I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have ten alphabets here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? If I just write it down, W B B W. W and then B B W B W. So I have these k cons. I have these. I have this as a string. I want k consecutive, which means I I want seven consecutive. Again, I just showed you first seven consecutive. It can be next seven consecutive. Then it can be next seven consecutive. Then it can be next seven consecutive. So these are possible options I have for the consecutive. Block blocks I want, but they are saying okay. No, you want consecutive black blocks only, which means that if I'm taking let's say this this consecutive block, okay, let's remove this only. If I take this consecutive block, so this entire should be black. This entire should be black. Obviously, in that case, you will have to recolor some white blocks to black. So you see that you recolor these two, these. And you have to tell what is the minimum number of operations needed such that there becomes at least one occurrence of k consecutive black blocks. So as you can see, if I have to recolor this specific window, I will have to recolor three. And also, fortunately, that is my answer three. So what I will do? Obviously, I will have to try for all possible options. Which means, firstly, I will take the first window of size k. And then try to recolor this to entire black, which means change all the whites in this to black. Obviously, the count will be three. Then, obviously, I will try to minimize that count. So I will try for the next window, next window of size k again. Here again, I will try to change all the uh, whites to black. I have three whites, so I will change that to black. Okay. Next, let's try for next window. Maybe I could find a lesser one. So here again, I will see one, two, three. Okay, again it's three. Then next window, I see one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Obviously, I want to minimize because if you see, I want to minimize. I want to use minimum number of operations, right? That is the reason I will always minimize my value of number of white, number of white in my window of size k, and that is actually my answer. Did you see? My answer is three. After trying for all the blocks. So, what is the time complexity of the code which we saw of the approach which you saw right now? Obviously, I was trying for the first index. I was trying for the first index, then a window of size k. I go to the entire window, and then I will get the corresponding count of white blocks in that window. This is this is for the first index. Then I'll do the same thing for the next index. I go here and do a corresponding count. Then I'll do the same thing for the next index. And so on and so forth. I'll keep on doing that. So obviously, the time complexity for this. Imagining I will have roughly n indexes, or you can say r n. It is n minus k indexes. Yes, you can say that. So for n indexes, you can say, and for each index, I was going through the window of size k. Complexity will be n into k. Will this work? Let's see. N is there, k is there. Yes, this will work because it's an easy approach. It's an easy approach. This will work. Can we optimize this? Yes, because we just saw. It is a window, window of a fixed size, right? And just I have to find the number of white blocks in a window of size k, and just slide that window. As I slide that window, obviously I will incorporate a new white element, and I might remove an existing white element from the window. So in the previous count, let's say I get the count, I get the count, the count of uh, you know white blocks is three. As I go on to the next element, I'll just increase the count by one because I'm, now I'm increasing my window, and then I'm shrinking my window, so I'll decrease 
the count if it's wide again there's a catch if it's wide then i'll decrease the count minus one and this i'll get the new count that's how with the help of sliding window approach again if you want to practice more sliding window problems come on to the practice playlist again as you can land on the home page you get dsa sheets in the practice sheets come on to your sliding window and in that you can simply practice for sliding window itself cool so what we realized here that we can simply approach sliding window and sliding window says that i will simply need to get to you know the entire window just like this as i go on to the next element i just incorporate this element and i will remove i minus k element and i'll keep on repeating the same process okay let's do a quick dry run and see that how we can solve this this specific answer although you know the approach i highly highly recommend go and code it out but let's see so obviously as we said that we can have a i it will keep on moving again usually you will see that uh, people tend to relate left and right with you know left and right pointer or you can say left and right uh, pointers for the sliding window both are same thing we can take any of things okay let's keep on moving now as you can see that i'm only concerned about the window of size k right so let's imagine that okay this is my right pointer and uh, i will have the corresponding left pointer as well but left should start off with the zero in the very beginning right okay and again if i put the index also zero one two three four five six seven eight nine let's proceed uh, so in the very beginning i'll say okay number of white blocks number of white blocks or number of white in the current window of size k it is right now zero i i got this white okay increase by one and again increase by one and then move my r okay i'll move my r then again it's a black so no increase okay again move the r now you might say are you what about the subtracting of l see so far the window has not become the size equal to k so there's no point of subtracting anything from l right now yes l is here right now l is here and l will remain here because the window of size k k is 7 in this case it hasn't become 7 okay let's proceed forward here it is again black no increment here okay my r is here now it is white increase it to 2 now again r is here it is white again increase it to 3 now move r okay it is black again no increase now r it is what black again okay no increase now my 6 minus 0 plus 1 so current length of window l minus r plus one, sorry r minus l plus 1 r minus l plus 1 this window is of size k which means now i have got one window of size k so my task is to get minimum recoloring so to get minimum recoloring so i'll initialize my minimum recolor with the let's say value of int max because i want to minimize it then i will say that if i have reached a window size of k then make sure that uh, minimum again as i mentioned there are multiple ways to go about it right you can also have a way that uh, now my r is you know more than equals to k or uh, more than equals to k minus one then start comparing or start minimizing your this specific thing minimum recolor and as the r becomes more than equal to k then you can start subtracting this l as well again as i mentioned there are multiple ways to implement it you can choose any way this way i found it the most cleanest and shortest that's the reason i'm showing you this but again as i mentioned there are multiple ways to go about it coming on back so we have minimum recolor i'll just simply minimize that so i'll say minimum recolor and then the current value of number of whites current value of number of whites okay is it done technically yes but what will happen as you will go on to the next step in the next step as you go you'll obviously move right because as we have already discussed in many of the videos in sliding window we have seen that we simply keep on moving right as we simply move right okay now the window has technically become the size of more than k so i should technically shrink i should technically shrink which means that when it was last time k in the next iteration obviously it will become higher so make sure that you shrink right right now only again after this after comparing or after minimizing a minimum number of uh, you know minimum answer or minimum recoloring make sure that you minimize your window by one so that next time l should come here next time so that when r reaches here we now again can get the window size 7 
I did the same thing here that uh, my, you know, just simply having a check if that left block, which means that if that uh, array, whatever array we have, we have the blocks array. So when the block array of left, if it's equals to white, then make sure that I decrease my number of whites. So number of white will decrease by one, decrease by one. And then obviously make sure that shift the left no matter what, shift the left no matter what. And this is how this piece of portion will help me shift it. And as I mentioned, because it's a main for loop which I will run. So which will obviously move my right one time. So R is the O, R is less than N and R, plus, R plus plus. R is always moving. R is always moving one step right. So R will be here. And then I can simply keep on moving. Now you might say, R in, okay, R is moving, but uh, the thing which you're doing here, you're not incorporating that in the code. Yes, we can do that simply in this line by saying that if your uh, blocks of, uh, you know, right, if it is equals to W, then make sure that you increase your number of fights by one. So this is how incorporating R at every step, you are just increasing your white. And then as the window size becomes K, you are just making sure that next time, please shift the L as well one step so that now you have a new window size. Thus, this entire code will run for number of elements and number of elements are just N. Let's see the code. It's exactly same. Again, I didn't show you the brute force code, which is getting into K, but still you can go about that as well. There are other brute force code as well, which will take obviously more space, for example, using Q and all that stuff. But again, this styling window is more straightforward and uh, simple. So let's, we have seen this code itself. So as I mentioned that R will always be moving one step, right? And that always happen in any of the approach, either it's two pointer, either sliding window, R will always move forward. Sliding window says that L does not shrink entirely. It just moves by one step because I have to achieve the same length of window of K. That's the difference between two pointers and sliding window. Again, everything which I told about two pointers itself, you can see in corresponding crash course as well. You know, if I come on to the two pointers, you know, this, you can see in this crash course as well, this crash course will completely cover it. Coming on back, I will check that, okay, if the block, right, if it's double, increase the number of whites, if the length becomes key, uh, I just minimize my number of colors. Again, this should be first. And after that, only I should make sure that I'm, you know, shifting my left by one and ultimately return the minimum number of colors. Time will be simple O of N. Space will be simple O of 1 because of no extra space used. Cool. I hope you guys got it. Make sure that hit the like target. Bye-bye. Take care. And see you next time. Goodbye.